from Bahrain, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Public Sector Bahrain. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE coverage here for AWS Summit in Bahrain in the Middle East. I'm John Furrier, the host of theCUBE. We're here, it's our second year covering the evolution of cloud computing in the region, changing the landscape of entrepreneurship, government, society, obviously, Data is the new oil, and we're excited to have our next guest, Abdullah Elmo Ikil, who's the co-founder and partner at Rain, a hot startup with some seed funding. I think has cracked the code on the crypto money-making aspect of cryptocurrency. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you for having me. So let's get started. You guys have a small team, got some seed funding. Interesting strategy on crypto. Everyone went ICO, kind of a fraudulent market. It's international, we all come watching the ICO. US uh, yep. cramping down on it. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs love this market. A lot of uh, innovation. You guys had a different approach and doing something very innovative. Mm. Take me to explain what Rain is doing because you've cracked the code on crypto to fiat. Yeah, that's right. Which has been the legit use case for you know, making this all this Absolutely. work. Absolutely, so w all of the, the founders, the four founders, Yahya Badawi, AJ Nelson, Joseph Delago, and I, uh, we've been in this industry for quite a while. We've been here five, six years, and we've seen all the, the hype cycles come and go, about sometimes about blockchain technology itself, and sometimes about the ICO craze. Uh, and we've really just bought, came down to what is the viable business model. We all, we're all entrepreneurs and we had looking for a new opportunity. As with a lot of people coming into this industry, with, as with any innovation, lots of opportunities arise. And we've looked at the world and the world had many exchanges uh, that were the most successful uh, businesses in this industry. The exchanges facilitating the trade, that was the most interest, that was the highest demand, and that was the, the real use case and we found that um, there were exchanges popping up from around the world but they weren't here uh, any in the in the Middle East yet and uh, perhaps it was due to a regulatory uncertainty or other difficulties of coming into this market but Bahrain really opened up for us and we met with the Central Bank of Bahrain uh, about three or four years ago and things really got started from there. And being a marketplace you got to have a lot of you know governance it's all a lot of regulatory pressures from the folks that have started. People who watch the Cube know that uh, we've been very bullish on crypto. We love blockchain as an underlying technology. Yeah, there's some sustainability issues around Bitcoin and others, we recognize that. But in general, this is a wave that cannot be denied. That's the right. money's flowing, mm -hmm. right? So money's flowing in crypto. So you got crypto to crypto. You guys have the fiat piece of it. So this brings on the first kind of liquidity opportunity in crypto to real money. Yeah, absolutely. So that's our main goal is we're serving both retail and institutions. And we believe there's going to be a lot of traffic from the uh, traditional finance world, uh, from institutions and individual investors uh, into the crypto world and the opposite as well. A lot of people had challenges with taking the profits out of exchanges and withdrawing them to their bank in a regulatory compliant way. And that's really what we're solving here for the, the lowest fees in the, in the region. Bahrain wants, to, Bahrain wants to be a modern society. They're going all in on cloud computing. Mm -hmm. They want to be a cloud country. They're open to new ideas. What attracted you to these guys? What made them different? Is it, was it their vision? Was it their posture on uh, oversight? What were some of the things that, that make, makes it work here? Well, at first it was the reception. Um, the Bahrain Central Bank had a fintech unit already in, in 2000, I think se early 2017. So that, that was great. I think other central banks around the region and the world were just starting then. There was the Bahrain Fintech Bay, uh, a dedicated working space for fintech companies here. So the ecosystem and the reception was really what attracted us at the beginning, other than knowing that Bahrain was a good financial hub for quite some time for the region. So we joined the Bahrain um, Central Bank's uh, regulatory sandbox, which allowed us to experiment and test whether we can do this in a safe and secure way. And about a year and a half later, uh, Central Bank drafted the regulations for crypto asset exchanges, brokerages. Uh, so now that that regulation got drafted and published, uh, we graduated from the sandbox, thankfully, and we were uh, allowed to apply for the license 
Shortly after we applied, we, we earned the license, thankfully. So what's next? What goes on now? You did a lot of, you did a lot of work, probably a lot of coding, got to make sure the FinTech mm -hmm. compliance, a lot of hurdles there. Yep. I can understand that. What's now next? Got the regulation in place. Yep. You can expand. What's the plan? Well, we announced the license, and uh, at the same time, we also announced closing our seed round. So with that, we were able to grow our team the past month from uh, eight to nine people to 15 to 17 people now and just more and more joining on, on board every day and our really our focus is growth now we are out of the sandbox we don't have the limitations of the sandbox we had before and we have banking relationships already made with different banks uh, so now we're just trying to reach out for the market so uh, we have grown our customer support team grown our engineering team uh, hiring in compli a compliance officer um, and uh, other growth aspects just moving forward. Standing up the basics of the business. That's right. What's your target audience going to be? The institutions at first, retail, what's the target audience? It's really both. It depends on what the market is, is providing. We see uh, institutional demand uh, that has always relied on, uh, when we spoke with institutions, they always relied on getting the license first because they don't want to operate with anyone unlicensed, which makes it, uh, you know, really interesting because that means they haven't been able to get into the digital asset or crypto asset world the past few years while it's, you know, going up and down. Um, so uh, we we see a 50-50 divide most likely and it's going to be a similar ratio than the rest of the world. But right now it's a lot of retail uh, customers. Abdul, great to get your perspective here. Obviously you've been in, in the space for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw the fire hype cycle go up and then the wet blanket crypto winter hit yeah in the united states certainly it put a clamp down on most icos mm -hmm. the sec is right looking at a bunch of startups and behavior uh, you know pretty wild west as they call it but and internationally it still has been pretty active even in the crypto winter go back say 2018 go back last year around march it yeah. kind of stopped got cold mm -hmm. and then frosted over now it's been a, a block of ice if you yeah. will yeah this crypto winter. What's your take on it? What's the vibe internationally? Obviously, still money's still flowing. Mm. Bitcoin's over ten thousand, I think, this morning. But st still, a lot of activity. Yes. Some tokens have fallen away. Some are staying mm. around. What's your assessment? So we've seen a lot of uh, cycles. Um, if, if you've been in this industry for five, six, seven years, you'll see that we've had multiple of these winters, some of them last, lasting longer than others. Um, and this late last one we didn't didn't last as long as the one before. So what we really, every time we see a, uh, a boom, we have uh, a lot of media and a lot of people coming in brand new trying to educate themselves about what is this. So we see just an everlasting cycle of just expansion. Um, and uh, the, the, the price right now is uh, not at the all time high, but it's still considered pretty uh, significant. At the beginning of the year, it was only about three or $4,000. Uh, right now, it's about $10,100 for, for a Bitcoin. Um, as with the ICOs, there have been a lot of concerns, uh, rightfully so, because anyone can whip up uh, a token and start selling it as, almost as a security. But the Central Bank of Bahrain has a, a list of acceptable crypto assets that they will allow us to list. So right now we only have four cryptocurrencies or assets, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and XRP. But nothing more than that at the time, and we hope to add more in the future. Yeah, Ripple's been taking some hits lately in the U.S. Mm -hmm. What about EOS and some of these other ones around the coin? It gets a corner, you get some growth, you're seeing some new things. How are you guys going to be evaluating some of these other new Currencies. Is there a is there a formula you keep mm -hmm. an eye on them? What's the cons is it a consensus? What's the right? So we, we are agnostic to choosing the the, the crypto asset that the, the our customers want to invest in. If the central bank of Bahrain accepts this as secure, liquid enough, and uh, essentially time tested as well for if if it's been around for let's say three to five years with no network issues, then maybe retail customers can invest in it. But if it, it's, if it it's just came up and it's brand new, it might come up, with, it's not time tested security wise. Um, it hasn't gone through some certain uh, pressures that are re necessary for a network of, for payments or, or, or storing of value. So the central bank makes the decision on 
what they're going to accept, what they list yeah. as and viable. That's right. But we, we take customer input all the time. We started with just three, and then we had a lot of demand for XRP here in the region, and we, we listed it after uh, getting it approved. Yeah. So we can't get KubeCoin up there yet, can we? Well, it depends <laughs> how high is it up and the... This doesn't exist yet. It's coming. <laughs> okay. It's been coming for two years. Everyone knows it's been coming. What's your uh, final thoughts to entrepreneurs out there? Because there's a lot of activity. This is one of those things where persistence really matters. Mm -hmm. Know your space. Stay humble. Yeah. Deal with these cycles because they are happening. Right. There is a, there is a high velocity mm -hmm. of cycles, seasons, if you will, winter yeah. and summer. Well, I really think people uh, should be should be more calculated and think long term with this with this technology. A lot of people are trying to make a quick buck or just make something, um, thinking that it's just a quick way to make money. But I, I really think people should educate themselves, both the entrepreneurs and the the uh, retail investors that uh, you know about the market, about the technology, so they can really see where the use cases might be of most need uh, to the market. Talk about your uh, your uh, expansion plans. You have two, two co-founders in the U.S., your mm -hmm. other co-founders in Egypt. Is there going to be a remote team? Is it going to be in Bahrain? What's the what's the hiring look like? Where's the, where are people going to be located? So most of our, if not all of our customer support um, or client service agents are here in, the re in Bahrain. Um, we have the co-founders now, the, the, the two, uh, Joseph and AJ uh, from uh, the Bay Area. They're in Bahrain as well here uh, for the majority of the year. They're in the office now. Um, the, the, the engineering team, however, is a little uh, scattered. Sometimes we, we find we, we, uh, security is a really high priority for us. It's the number one priority for us as any uh, cryptocurrency exchange would be. So we, we really scout talent in, from the U.S., from uh, Canada, from other places around the world. Uh, so our engineering team is based in the Bay Area and other places in the U.S. Um, aside from uh, Joseph, who leads it, uh, who's the co-founder here in Bahrain, and the rest of the, the business and the customer team is here in Bahrain. So really, the gating factor on hiring is making sure it's security's number one, so it's not yep. so much get people filled in an office on the engineering front. No, it's, it's definitely, we, we, we look for high quality candidates. So that's our priority. We, we may be a small team, but they're all superstars, to be honest. What's been the biggest challenge that you guys had to overcome in this process? Because it's tough to get the license. Mm -hmm. Was it just being patient? Was it the diligence? What were some of the things that you overcame that were challenges? Well, it, it, it's, it's definitely, it definitely was a challenge to talk to uh, a lot of regulators in the region in general. Um, Bahrain was by far the most cooperative. So right now, uh, the challenge is perhaps talking to other regulators when you talk expansion plans. We hope to, we are serving the whole Middle East here from, the, uh, from Bahrain. But we ideally, ideally want to also set up banking in Kuwait or UAE or Saudi, uh, just so we can yeah. have better, quicker uh, on and off ramps for uh, the customers there. One of the big stories, obviously Amazon Web Services has a region here. Mm -hmm. um, pretty important, pretty big deal. What's your take on what you think this is going to do for the region, having a Amazon region, multiple availability zones? What's that going to do for the entrepreneurship it, equation? I mean, it, it, it's, it's fantastic. We see a lot of uh, excitement here from entrepreneurs in the region, and especially with uh, regulation uh, about having customer data stored here in the region. Um, it's really going to help a lot of entrepreneurs also mitigate uh, you know, any downtime from hosting it in other places. New generation of entrepreneurship hitting the scene here, isn't it? Yeah, it's really exciting. Uh, lots of funding going around, lots of ideas. Yeah. Pretty, really, really exciting for yeah. all entrepreneurs. Fail fast, as we always say. No one likes failure, but it takes, takes guts to start a company. Of course, of course. Abdul, thanks for coming on. Appreciate sure. your insight. Congratulations on your success. Thank it's you very Cube much. the CUBE coverage here. We are in Bahrain for AWS Summit. We'll be back with more after the short break.